Roxanne is amazing. We wish them both the best. So many caregivers, though, have that same routine as you saw, Roxanne. If you are one or you know of a caregiver, please call our phone bank. Again, it's open right now. The number is 1-800-861-7826. You can ask a question. It will be directed in here to our studio to ask the experts we have on, or you can simply get reams of information from the Alzheimer's Association of Southeast Florida. They have packets to mail out to you with just a phone call. As I said, we have several experts with us this evening. First tonight, I'd like to introduce you to Diane Black, who, like Roxanne, is a caregiver. And David Levy is a caregiver expert with lots of degrees, too many to get into right now, but can definitely help us guide the maze of caregiving. Diane, we saw that story. You're a more typical caregiver because your mother's 88 years old. Right. Um, but is it a lot like what we saw, a lot of just everyday routine that you have to physically take care of her? Uh, yes, um, with an Alzheimer's patient, they forget to do even something as basic as brush their teeth. And um, mother went to Alzheimer's daycare for two years. And in the morning, our routine was, you know, here, mama, here's the washcloth, wash your face. Here's your toothbrush. And you really did have to lead them uh, through the um, things that they needed to do for daily living. And is it, how taxing is that on your life, on your other family member's life, that, you know, this, this person who you love is now almost enabled to take care of herself? Um, when you're a full-time caregiver, it consumes your life. Really? That is your life. And David, is that a pretty typical thing? You teach classes, you talk to caregivers, you write on this. Is that a typical statement? It's a typical statement um, for most caregivers that they get very involved, and especially when the caregiving is dementia related. Um, it's very, very hard to deal with somebody that you've loved and been around all your life who all of a sudden doesn't recognize you. And as Diane points out, the activities of daily living and, um, and just the basics really have to be attended to, as well as the fact that her mom's 88. And so there are the normal conditions of aging, irrespective of the illness, that would probably require Diane to be doing things for her mother at this point. And when you're talking to caregivers or trying to help them, what are some of the, the, the basic tips? I mean, can you have some just basic things you do every day that makes life a lot easier? Or is this just gonna be overwhelming no matter what? Well, I think overwhelming is a situation that occurs whenever somebody is faced with something that they haven't done before. And essentially caregiving, we don't have a caregiver gene, <laughs> all right? It's not intuitive and very few people go back to school. So it's not surprising that we don't know what we don't know. At a distance, all caregiving looks like up close, it's fingerprints. So to ask, answer your question, I don't think that there are many common uh, activities. I think they're all unique, but they fall within um, a range of things like activities of daily living, etc. And do you, I mean, do you find that people who come to your class, there's a certain personality that maybe is more in tune with caregiving than another, or can anyone kind of learn what Diane and Roxanne have learned to do? Well, I think you can learn it, but usually when people come to the classes or the support groups, they've come to the recognition that they can no longer deal with the situation without having some outside help. And it's because you're emotionally involved and you can't see the situation with the perspective, and you're trying to guide somebody through the healthcare system as well as figure out how to survive as a caregiver. And how to survive as a caregiver, Diane, you're surviving it. What would you tell people who are watching it that may have just found out that their loved one is diagnosed? How do you survive it? Uh, you survive it by getting involved in a support group because sitting around the table with other people who have experienced what you are just beginning to experience, they have so many tips that will help you. Uh, things like, um, distracting the, the Alzheimer's patient if they get weepy or something's upsetting them. Try to uh, ask them a question about something that happened between the ages of 17 and 28. Those are the memories that they have the longest. For my mother, when she gets upset, I'll start talking about her dog, Amy. Aww. And she just, she loved that dog. And she may not remember her grandkids, but she remembers Amy. And so um, one of the things too, you have to keep a sense of humor. 
um, that, you know, you hear of situations where you either laugh or cry. Right. And you learn to laugh. Some of the situations, like my mother got out at four o'clock in the morning and knocked on a neighbor's door, set off their alarm. Uh, some of these things as they're happening are just horrible. But then you learn to find the humor in it. And we met people who came to the next Alzheimer's fundraiser. Oh, well then that was meant to be. Yes, it was, <laughs> yes it was. Well, one, one of my questions in doing this special, David, is can, um, it, it seems like a, I guess, um, so much effort and so little payback. Let's just face it. Not only are you caregiving, which is a lot of effort, but you're caregiving to people who may not even remember who you are. So how do you tell caregivers to actually take care of themselves? Well, that's part of the, the very difficult problem with caregivers is they get involved and they forget about themselves. And obviously, if both people, if, if you don't take care of yourself, especially with the stress and the, and the tension that dementia brings, you're going to get sick and if you get sick now there's two people that need care <laughs> and um, and that's not a situation that we want to see especially as more care goes home with aging in place we're going to find these issues are, are continually arising so the net effect of it is you need to be able to have somebody who can help to guide you ultimately you have to be a problem solver and 85 percent of caregiving is problem solving wow Wow. And is there a um, light at the end of the tunnel? Is there any um, way to, to keep them at home and do a good job? Or eventually, with the aging as they get to 88, 89, is it kind of inevitable they'll have to go to an assisted living facility? Um, it's inevitable that they may require more professional help depending on the state of the health care system and the lack of facilities and skilled personnel whether or not you'll be able to do it in a nursing home or a dementia unit at an assisted living facility is a big if. And I know the cost is also a huge if. I know you mentioned daycare. Yes. Um, how much of a you know, uh, safety net and a respite help is daycare to you? It was incredible. It was a lifesaver for both myself and mother because for six months, I stopped working totally wow. until I found Alzheimer's Community Care's daycare center. And the structure of the program was wonderful. Every 20 minutes, the activities changed. So it kept the uh, clients engaged. And if there was something they didn't like, in 20 minutes, they would be doing something else. But mother blossomed. It was like watching a flower open because she was in with her peers. She could tell the same story over and over they didn't remember they had yeah, it. Yeah, that's perfect. They liked so, it. <laughs> yeah, they liked it. And it was wonderful for me because I was able to go back to work. So um, if daycare is available, the caregiver has to have time to go and grocery shopping. Or just you know. go to a park and breathe deeply yes. right. for five yes. minutes. Well, thank you both. We'll, we'll, join, we'll see you again later, but thank you both for joining us.